I remodeled my porch. Now I can use it to heat my house for free all winter long. It uses passive solar heating and this custom wood-burning rocket mass heater to generate the heat. It also turns out to make a pretty good sauna too. This is what my porch looked like before I started. After enclosing both walls with either custom steel doors and vinyl sheets or recycled glass, this is how the project turned out. Let me show you how I built it all. Demolition is the first step of many projects, and this one was no exception, so I quickly destroyed the porch I had screened in about 10 years prior when my only priority was keeping mosquitoes out. My new priority was heating my house and the greenhouse I plan on building in the near future. To be frank, the sauna was very much an afterthought, but it still turned out pretty neat, I think. All right, so we got the walls down now. Now it's time to bust up the tile. And the reason I'm definitely committed to getting rid of the tile, you can see, maybe not the best, but there's quite a bulge in the tile by that second post from where we are standing, just beyond the bucket. Uh, I had some foundation work done. I think that put a lot of inward pressure on the tile and it bulged up in response. This tile is the same tile that is on the inside of the house. So I'm going to go to some effort to try and save whatever tiles I can because I can clean the grout and mortar off and we'll use them for the projects inside the house if we go moving like a kitchen countertop or something. Another update, I found that I have some faulty concrete on the edge of my slab here. Looks pretty ominous. From here, there's cracks along there, goes about to over there. There's even an exposed rebar here, another tip right there. And listen to this. Obviously, that's a bunch of loose cement. So edge here is damaged. That exposed rebar uh, certainly didn't help. Moisture gets in, rust the rebar. The blistering of the rebar tends to swell and expand the cement to crack it. Uh, cement is very good at resisting compression, not so good at tension. So when you push from the inside out, it's not, not made to do real well with that. Anyway, so this needs some repair. We'll see how bad it is. Step one of almost all repairs is figuring out what you're up against. So I'm gonna start to demolish what I got going on here. Uh, if it's bad enough, this may lead to a whole spin-off video. And yeah, this was bad enough. It led to a whole spin-off video. I'll put a link in the corner of this screen if you want to go check out the whole thing in detail. In the meantime, y'all get to watch me Bob Ross some rebar. Happy little rebar. All right, so the concrete is now poured. It's been drying for about two and a half days. I've been spraying it with a water bottle several times a day. But while that's curing slowly but surely to make it nice and as uh, durable and hard as possible, root cause number one was exposed rebar tips. Root cause number two is that as the slope of my roof goes up, that awning becomes less effective. If you picture a driving rain coming in from the side, well, the distance from here to the slab is pretty short. So that blocks quite a bit of that rain. But as that roof goes further and further away from the concrete, more and more rain is able to drive in. Now my plan is to put a big glass wall over this whole thing, but awnings are nice, man. And you wanna be able to step outside without getting poured on if you need to. And whatever the joint between the glass wall and the floor, I don't want water pooling up sitting on that joint either. So I'm gonna make an awning.
Man, welding stuff sure is fun, let me tell you. You know, there was a time when I was in college that I actually hired myself out as a mobile welder on Craigslist. It was fun, I made some money, paid the bills. You know, I've been getting the sense that in some of these comments, there are a lot of folks out there that might want to learn how to weld or do some simple metal work. If that's the case, I now have a Patreon page, and I'm thinking I'm going to put up a poll, seeing how many people out there may want some dedicated Patreon videos on simple how to do metal work, how to weld, stuff like that. So if anything like that intrigues you, head on over to Patreon, check it out, see if you want to take the poll, become a member, and if you want, I can start making videos like that for Patreon supporters. I'll put a link in the description. All right, so we got the rough framing all together. I put it up in place just to make sure everything fits. I think it came out looking all right. Uh, the last thing I want to weld on here is one beam going from the point here across and up to the point there. All right, y'all will have to forgive the background noise. My hens are making a lot of racket in there. and They don't listen to what I say. So I welded this out of three quarter inch tube steel and I went on Amazon and I bought some caps. These just go inside of the tube steel because I don't want rain getting into the tops because I didn't really allow for any route out. I welded the small piece of steel on the bottom. So I'm gonna put those in place and then before I lift it into place because this is a little bit more complicated roofing corner here. I'm gonna apply the roof panels to this. All right, so here we have it. I got the first three panels in place. I pre-cut all these panels, and then just to keep it really brainless, I numbered them panel one, two, three, so on and so forth. So we're about to go try and lift this sucker into place and screw it onto the wall. The awning is done. The paint came out looking pretty nice, I think. Those little caps really are a nice finishing touch. It really makes it look like I bought this thing or something, but there it is, all done and built. Hopefully my goal is accomplished. Any rain that would have been driving in from this side, uh, that awning will help cover it. And I'll give you guys a quick side view. We're moving on. This awning was only meant to be a tangent to the larger project of renovating the porch. The cement has been fixed. The awning is up. You know, I think I want this door. I'm gonna use my old sliding door to help me frame in the side wall of my patio over on this side. While there are many videos on the internet of how to replace and install a sliding door, the specifics of what I'm doing is trying to reuse a sliding door. With this vintage door, there's this 
molded tab that comes that's part of the frame and how the door the primary thing holding it in place is probably one some spray foam and other insulation and two is nails every so often so i got my finger on a nail here the the trouble with these types of nails especially this one's a great example it's pressed in pretty far it's probably shot with a nail gun um, and that indent makes it hard to get any tool underneath the head of that nail and pry it out without really damaging this tab. So one of the things I figure I'm gonna do to avoid damaging the frame of the door, I'm gonna use the center punch to punch a hole dead center on the head of that, and I'm gonna get a drill, and I'm gonna drill until the head and the shaft of the nail are detached. So if you drill a hole about half the diameter of what the head is, right dead center on the head, that should detach the head from the shaft, and then you can just pull the frame gently off the shaft of that nail. So that's the head right there. Came right off on the drill bit. And look at that. The frame's already off. I saved all the painstaking detail of watching me put in the trim and caulk. But with that door up and the old door that was there harvested, the next step is to keep moving on with the rocket mass heater. And what, you ask, is a rocket mass heater? Why this is a rocket mass heater. It's an earthen-based stove that uses wood as a fuel, and it actually stores up the heat in the earth material and then slowly releases it into your living environment over the course of many hours, so they're hyper-efficient. I made a dedicated video on this project and I really highly recommend that you go watch it. These stoves are super interesting, so I put a great deal of effort into really expanding on how to build one of these things, or, or at least the principles of building these things, so I recommend you go watch it. Very cool video. So with the rocket mass heater now complete, it's probably time to start talking about the custom doors I'm putting in place, which by the way was one of the most common comments I saw on my rocket mass heater video was why are you heating the outdoors? Well, don't worry, it's not my plan to heat the outdoors. I am gonna enclose this porch. So let's talk about how I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna make some custom sliding doors to fill these two panels here. And those doors will be able to be either separated with one on each side or both overlapping off to one side. On this face over here, this does have to be pretty well insulated because it's separating the porch greenhouse combo from the outside world. So as y'all saw before, I harvested that older door and I'm gonna use that here along with a window I picked up uh, from a used window store. So let's start working on both of those. I made a dedicated video on how I built these doors too. I'll put a link in the corner of the screen for anyone who wants to see more detail. All right, so here we are inside the porch. I got both doors up and done. I got the vinyl sheets on there, which you can barely even see from this angle. It's a lot easier to tell they're there from the outside because there's more of a glare on them. But with the doors done, and it being the dead of summer, I'm definitely gonna take these vinyl sheets off right now because it's way too hot in here with those on. 
And then it's time to move on to the next part of this porch renovation, which is closing off this face of the porch. I'm gonna leave a gap in the framing to pass the chimney through. Let's get started on that now. Because this heater pulls so much heat out of the exhaust gas, the chimney is cool enough to touch with your bare hands. To add an extra layer of safety though, I made sure that I used only fireproof material around the chimney. For the siding, I used fireproof cement board, and you'll see that in a second here. This insulation is called rock wool. It's basically fireproof and I had a bunch left over from insulating my workshop. They make a specialty knife to cut it and I was basically able to cut pieces to custom shapes and fit them into place like little puzzle pieces. And if anyone copies me on this, please make sure to check with your local fire codes first. I'm not saying this is how this should be done, this is just what I'm doing. So now I got all the caulk and paint in place. That basically concludes the construction of the walls of the porch. So the glass wall here is complete. And shortly after finishing that up, a cold front rolled through. And so I put the vinyl sheets on place on this wall. And so now the porch is basically hot boxed in. So it's really time to start playing with the rocket mass heater and seeing what this thing can do as the weather cools off. I'll see how much I can heat the house. The ultimate plan is to be able to open the doors to my house here light a fire, and that will allow the heat from the rocket mass heater into the house. And the even longer term plan is to build a big greenhouse out here that's gonna extend along the line of my finger, way out kind of toward where the workshop is. And then this heater will also be heating that greenhouse on the coldest nights of the year. Something that occurred to me just as I was finishing up the wall over here is that if I were to add some stones on top of the rocket mass heater bell here, this would probably function as a fairly nice sauna. Now I know I don't want to put too much moisture into the porch itself because it's not good for the walls and I certainly wouldn't want to put too much moisture into my house itself because I'm not trying to rot all the furniture and stuff. But for everywhere once in a while, especially once the greenhouse is completed over here, it certainly would be cozy to have a sauna built into the whole system. So I went to a local building supply place, picked up some rocks, set them in place on top of the bell, and now I want to see how well this sauna actually works. So let's check it out. So I'm not sure that constitutes a sauna. I don't know, if you have friends that are into saunas or cold plunges, if you wanna go ahead and forward them this video and have them weigh in in the comments, see what they think, because this kind of feels like a knockoff sauna. I'm sure the purists would say it's nothing like one, but I know it is a heater. It does work, it's really hot in there. Remember, the long-term plan for this heater setup is to heat a big greenhouse that I'm gonna be building right here. In the meantime, though, I get to use it to heat the house passively using the sheets here, because it traps solar heat. And then also actively as I burn wood, both of those will heat the house and it does work. If you got any value from this video whatsoever, I would ask that you please do your part to support me just a little. If you click the subscribe button or the thumbs up or both, that would help the algorithm boost things up. Get YouTube to compensate me a little bit for the time I spent on this. Uh, I got a couple small projects in the meantime, but pretty soon I'm going to start working on the massive greenhouse here. That's going to be a multi video project. And uh, yeah, I'll keep everyone posted. Thanks again for watching Suburban Biology. See you on the next one.